Hey guys, we're just doing a quick audio check a few minutes early. Uh, let us know in chat if you can hear us, and then I can let Patrick go to his all-important T-ball game. We're good? All right, get out of here. Hey, guys, we are going to make uh, one of our favorite pheasant things we ever made here. It is a pheasant rangoon. So I posted the ingredients or whatever that you're going to need for it if you wanted to follow along at home or if you just want to see me do some Asian fusion, I guess this would be called. I, I don't know. I'm not a chef. Um, but we've got wontons, which we're going to use for the wrapper. We've obviously got some pheasant. Uh, I have a half egg wash, half water. I've got oil that I just turned on. Um, I'm trying it in this weird little crock pot griddle type thing. Um, I've got some cream cheese. I have the habanero mango jam from Terrapin Ridge Farms, which is ridiculously tasty. I've got a pan that just started back here. So I've got oil heating up in that. And most importantly, I have a New Holland Cabin Fever Brown Ale. This is a six, I saw it somewhere, maybe it's on the package, 6.5% alcohol brown ale, and it is actually fairly delicious. I like New Holland in general, and I love brown ales, um, but this is quite good. So hopefully you have, I saw somebody talking about Evan Williams, um, hopefully everybody's got something good to drink, and we're going to make one of my favorite dishes. There are kind of a lot of steps to it, so I don't do it often, um, but it is well worth doing. It's really, really good. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take all the skin off of our pheasant, then we're going to cut it up into little chunks that will quickly cook up. We're going to do mostly just a par cook. I'm not going to worry about it getting up to 165 degrees. Then I'll chop it into even finer bits, place it in the center, or I'm sorry, mix it in with the cream cheese and the mango, then take some of that, place it in the center of our wonton, or yeah, to our wonton, make a little like wrap out of it, and then deep fry it. 
So we talked a lot on Meatjustics recently about what the best deep frying oils are. That's peanut oil. It seemed to be what most people use, and it's what I've used in the past. Uh, there are a couple other suggestions thrown out there, but peanut oil seems to be the best thing to go. Now, this little contraption here has, at least within Walton's, famously blown the fuse like three or four times in this one wall. So if I lose you, it's over. I'm sorry, that blew a fuse. Um, but I turned everything else off. So it's the only thing running on that circuit. I don't think it's likely uh, that we're going to lose it. But you never know. Who do we have here? We got Papa Sop. We got Tex and James McLaughlin. So hopefully you guys have something good to drink. Um, I'm pretty much just going to get started here. One thing of note, uh, we did a Willet Barbecue before we did our podcast today, uh, it was Beaver Tail. So I will let you listen to the podcast because we talked a little bit about how that is or how it came out. Um, and then we'll release the Willow Barbecue hopefully next week. Um, we're planning on doing about one Willow Barbecue a month. We've still got snake, eel, parrotfish, which isn't really that weird, but I wanted lionfish, but they didn't have any. Um, kangaroo and something else, some other weird protein in there. But anyways, check out the podcast if you want to see how that was, and then we will have a full video on it coming out shortly. The beavers, the beaver tails come to you with like the skin on it. It looks like leather. It's crazy. I was expecting just like the meat, but no, you get the entire tail. So it was pretty, pretty interesting. I'm going to grab a beer. Then we're going to take the skin off all of these, chop them up and fry them. And we are doing beer this time, not whiskey like we did last time. That was a problem. All right, so you can leave the skin on if you want. Um, generally with pheasant, I'm not a huge fan of the skin. And it comes off really easily. You can basically just rip it off. So it's not hard to separate at all. This is pheasant I got from uh, McFarland pheasant. So it's farm raised, but this works just as good with uh, wild pheasant. So if you like shooting the birds and don't know what to do with them, this is a great way to do it. And if you wanna see our original video on it, uh, we have it with Pheasants Forever. It's on their website and it's on our YouTube channel. So if I mess up, or you want to go back and you don't want to watch the whole live stream, we do have all the instructions step-by-step step in a three or four minute video. But I definitely recommend making this recipe because it's absolutely delicious. All right. So as I said, I've got this pan on. Behind me, I put a little bit of the peanut oil in there. Um, we're obviously going to worry about cross-contamination here. So as things get used, they're going to go into the sink. And unlike our last one where we did the red sauce with the sausage, there's really nothing for you to see back here. So we're not going with two cameras. It's just cooking pheasant in oil. And as we all know, the biggest online retailer is having its annual huge sale. Don't forget that we are also having our 
first ever uh, summer sale. Basically, anything Walton's branded other than sausage stuffers is on between 25 and 30 something percent uh, discount. Uh, most of the equipment is 25%. So if you ever wanted a vacuum sealer, a grinder, a slicer, I think mostly those things, uh, now is the time. They won't be on this level of sale again, certainly not at least until Christmas and maybe not even quite this steep a discount now. The chambered vacuum sealer is usually like $1,100, $1,099, something like that. It's $824 right now. So as I said, I'm not really going to tempt that because it's going to cook in the oil. Uh, we want our oil to be at about 350 degrees. This has a, a nice little dial set on the side of it, but sometimes it takes a long time for it to get up to temperature. Uh, right now it's shooting past 250. So it's probably somewhere in like the 265 range, yeah, 265 degrees. So that's coming up to temperature nicely really doesn't take that long to make this recipe. It is just kind of a lot of steps. Um, and then I've also got some green onions that we're gonna chop up and sprinkle on the top. Um, this is the chipotle lime sweet rub. I'm gonna add it to the pan. Probably should have done that as I was cutting it up, but I didn't. Yeah, Ryan, I've seen what's in your center console. So I, I, I might side with the people on this one. Plus, if I sweat, all the air is off, that's on, and that's on. So if this shirt turns a, a darker shade of gray, we're all just going to have to muddle through together with it. I was outside. It's like disgustingly hot and muggy out today. I was cooking the beaver tail outside. I had to switch shirts. I was just drenched. I hate sweating. That's what happens when you get fat, though. Yeah, so pheasant, you want to cook it to 165, absolutely just like any poultry. All poultry should be cooked to 165. The worst food poisoning I ever got, actually, that's not true. The second worst food poisoning I ever got uh, was from, we think at least, a probe thermometer that I had inserted into a chicken or into a turkey that then fell down into the cavity. So we have no idea what the final cook temp was. And my guess is about 140. Um, ate it after a more than a few bites. I was like, eh, this doesn't quite feel like it's fully cooked. Uh, and I was quite sick for the next few days. I debated using the hot habanero bacon jam instead of this mango habanero, but this worked so well last time that I just figured might as well go with it again. It worked really, really well. So if anyone's in, in the area and wants to stop by tomorrow, I'm not going to eat all this tonight for sure. I uh, already ate multiple times today. So uh, for anyone in the area also, we're doing our brat fest on August 20th, and I'm doing, or we're bringing in a dip tank. Some Meat Gistics member, I don't know who it is yet, but some Meat Gistics member owns some dip tanks or dunk tanks. Uh, so they offered it to us for free as long as we all got up there. So I'm trying to lose at least a little bit of these love handles that I have accumulated over the past few months. Um, I do not want to look like a whale as I get dunked in that tank. And if you do come, I'm absolutely going to make fun of you if you miss any of your throws so yeah see that's the danger of a glass top and whatever this technique is i spilled a little bit on there so that's going to smoke for a bit 
Should be fun to clean up. Oh, another thing we got. A new Escali scale. It's not actually that new. We've had it for a while that I'm falling more and more in love with. Uh, so this is a replacement of the Escali orange and black scales that we previously carried. It is really close to as accurate as the Precision Escali scale. It doesn't do fractions of grams, but it comes really close. Unless you're using sodium erythorbate, that's the only additive, if you use a lot of, that I would say you still should have a Precision scale instead of this. This scale has more versatility to it. Um, it is a really good uh, food prepping scale. In fact, I'm going to bring it home for my wife after this and let her play around with it for a while because she does all sorts of food prep stuff. I need a... Something to get these out of without spilling the oil all over the place. So I saw uh, Evan Williams. What else are people drinking? It's rude to make me drink by myself. I can vaguely hear somebody talking. It's very distracting. Not the type of person who has a good enough uh, concentration level to not be distracted by that. Somewhere around here is my chef's knife. <laughs> mm. I refuse to use a different knife. And of course, it was in the sink that I just placed the uncooked uh, pheasant skin in, so we had to wash it again. Uh, these are the knives you get when you make 1,500 posts on Meat Justics, I think. I think that is 1,500, 2,000. A bunch of you guys are in here, so I'm sure somebody knows it. Um, I absolutely love this knife. I wanted to bring in my sword. Um, for those of you who don't know, I bought a Dalstrong 17-inch tuna sword. It's their Shadow Series, so it's all black. It is absolutely awesome, um, but it's down in my weapons room at my house, and I forgot it. Uh, I've already sharpened this on this diamond sharpening steel. Super simple to do. Just align it with where you, what angle you want uh, to put the edge on the knife. Run it down one side. I like to hold it at about a 45 degree angle. Don't straighten your arm out, like kind of have it bent a little bit and just run it down, flip it the other side, run it down again. And the whole time what I do is keep my eye on the end of the steel and try to keep that fairly straight. It's gonna move a little bit as I move the knife down it, um, but the advantage to a diamond sharpening steel is this can actually take a somewhat dull blade and bring it back to sharp. Those round or smooth, polished, whatever you call them, packing house steels, they can only realign a burr. So it's gonna take a bent edge and push it back into line, but it can't take an already dull knife and make it any sharper. All right, so I've turned that off back there, and I'm gonna go through and start chopping this up. I want it to be nice and fine because I want to mix it in with my cream cheese and my habanero jam really well. So we're going to try to do this without losing any fingers or any skin, which means I'm not going to look at the chat for a while. So if Austin or somebody was here making fun of me, not much I can do about it for the moment. Ooh, 
Ooh, hot. But also, I am interested out of snake, eel, parrotfish, kangaroo, and God, there's something else interesting in there. And I can't remember what it is at the moment. But which of those would you guys like to see us do a will it barbecue on next? Um, another easy way to do what I'm doing right now would be as if you have a food processor, just toss this in it for a second, let it shred it all for you. We've got the Weston uh, Pro Series blender. Uh, probably would have worked perfectly fine for this. Just don't really use much from them anymore. Also, Austin and I have some, we've recently had some back and forth ideas about the team orange, team blue thing and a way to sort of not revive because people have kept it going, um, but to ramp up that competition uh, a little bit more. Because we have fun with it kind of ignored it over the last year and a half while we've been just slammed with other things. But we're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel now. Um, at least in, in my department, I've got some really good people working for me, for us. Um, and Austin's bringing in a programmer, um, and he's got a decent, uh, a good, sorry, if Chris, if you're watching, a good IT department. Um, so hopefully he and I will have some more time to start doing some regular videos again, like like we did today with the Will of Barbecue. Can't wait for you guys to see that beaver tail one. I've got a lot of questions. No, it's not. Oh, yes. No, of course it is. God. That's how scatterbrained I am recently. I saw Team Blue and I read Team Orange. Last night, I, I haven't slept more than four hours um, a night for the last, like, going on seven days now. Last night, I finally fell asleep at 8.45, 9.05. Tap, 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 tap. Heard my 190-pound dog walking around our hardwoods. I'm like, whatever, I'll ignore him. Tap, 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 tap. Hear him walk away. He went, got a drink, came back with his wet muzzle and just pressed it up against my thigh. Because he wanted to go outside, and he knew that that would get him what he wants. So I got up, took him outside, and then I was just too mad to fall back asleep. I hate that feeling. Just the laying there trying to sleep, but you're angry, never works. <laughs> no, Austin doesn't get a cutting board. Too many of his posts are, oh, yeah, great. Thanks. No, I'm just kidding. He already has a cutting board. He also already has a knife, even though he doesn't deserve it. What's up? Why are you still here? We're good? Okay. Yeah. All right, if somebody needs to come back and do something, just call me. So our commercial sales department right now is at AMP. Um, that's the big yearly convention for commercial customers. So, sorry, that's just what we were talking about there. It's also funny, I keep looking in between the monitor and the actual camera. So I'm looking here addressing you guys, there's nothing there. Should have done this on a bamboo board. But we learn from our mistakes. Normal people do, I don't. Okay. So we've got everything nice and chopped up fine. He did. He's gone. Don't worry, Tex. I won't let the, the bad man hurt you. So we're going to take our cream cheese. Put 
put it all in there. Oh, this is really melted. So we obviously left it out for a few hours to let it soften. I'm going to get a napkin. Mm. Another thing that some of you might find interesting, I don't know who has jumped on the 20 and 30 pound electric stuffers, but they just sent us the 10 pounder. I can't wait to show you guys the 10 pounder because it, there's one meme that the second I saw it, it's all I could think of and I can't even look at it without laughing anymore. But they included a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter stuffing tube. When they initially sent us our first test unit, the first thing that both Andrew and I said is these are not acceptable. And they had already warned us, like these aren't what the stuffing tubes will be like in the end. But the difference between the originals and these is night and day. My first thought in picking this up is this is what a Tulsa, which is a many thousands of dollars hydraulic stuffer, this is what that build quality feels like. And I did take 16 millimeter collagen casings, run them through this 10 millimeter tube on the electric stuffer, and it worked. It didn't trip the motor. It was running at decent speed, um, certainly faster than you could hand crank a casing that small. So it's still not going to come with a 10 millimeter just because we want to encourage people to use 19 and 21 millimeter snack stick casings. That's the appropriate size. Six, not, smaller than 19, you're asking for all sorts of problems to occur with both your machine and your smoke cycle. So 19 or 21 is the way to go. But if you're someone who's stubborn and just wants their 16 millimeter, we will have a 10 millimeter tube and it will work even just with the electric, or even with the electric uh, stuffer. Our initial thought was that we would sell this and tell you, yes, it can use, or can be used with that, but you have to use the hand crank, not the electric motor. It gave us no problems whatsoever as we were going through it. So 10 millimeter tube, 16 millimeter casing will work. All right, we're gonna dump. all of our pheasant in there. Then we're gonna take two heaping spoons of this, mix it in there. That's about a half a jar. Um, and we used, I think it was four uh, pheasant breasts. Now these are four farm raised pheasant breasts. So that may be closer to six. Um, if you're doing this with pheasants you shot, And we're just gonna mix it till everything's all nice and evenly distributed. I'm not gonna add any more of the uh, sweet lime chipotle. Once everything is fried, um, I'll stack them all and I will, I'll sprinkle on a little bit more of it there and I'll put on some of the um, green onions. But I'm just using the cream cheese, the habanero, or the mango habanero jam from Terrapin Ridge Farms, and the pheasant in this. Okay, here we're gonna have a little bit of space issue. So give me a moment to readjust. Take a drink. So my, one of my favorite, like just all the time drinking beers is Newcastle. And this is definitely stronger than that. 6.5, I think Newcastle is like 5.1. Um, and it tastes stronger, like it's got more of an alcohol flavor to it. But it's fairly easy drinking for a 6.5% alcohol beer. That's what you come to Meat Gistics for, right? It's for us to tell you the strength of uh, different beers we're drinking. All right. So these are just regular wonton wrappers um, picked up at the store. I've got an egg wash. I don't think you're going to be able to see this, but it's basically like 50-50 
maybe closer to 75, 25 water uh, to egg. So I just beat some eggs really well. We're gonna use that to help seal these, keep them closed during uh, the frying process. I'm gonna check the temperature of my oil. Perfect. We're right about 350, so that's exactly where we wanna be. Um, nice thing about these is when they're basically done, they will float. So initially, they should go in and sink. Once we have them to the level of doneness we want, they should start floating, so it's nice and easy. All right, move some things around so you guys can hopefully see more of this. I was going to be wearing like our little lapel mic, uh, but we had an issue with those earlier today. Everything's breaking. It, we're probably at the, the point where a lot of our equipment needs to be replaced. Just we've been doing this for six years now. Yeah, six years now. I've been involved in these things for five years, which is crazy. I uh, don't want to overstuff it. So as you can see, we've, I mean, what is that? Like three inches by three inches. So there's only a small amount that we're going to be able to place in there and still like seal it up nicely. So I'm going to be really careful, especially with the first few, as I remember how much each of these can take. Move things around a little bit because I am going to stage them on this. So be patient with me as I remember how to do this. We're going to get our hands wet with a little mixture to help seal everything. I'm going to fold them over into a, so the two corners are touching. Then I'm going to bring up one of the corners and bring up the other corner. Then with my hands that are wet with the egg wash and water, I'm just going to run them down all those open sections. So that should keep it nice and closed. Um, try and do a better job of letting you see how much I'm using. So we're gonna put it in. It fills up about the inside quarter, I would say, maybe inside half of the wonton. Yeah, this one was closer to inside half, and I'm gonna say this one is going to give us problems with being too much. There are other ways you can fold up a wonton. Um, a real popular way is just make it look like a tortellini. But I really liked how these came out last time, so I'm just trying to do it basically the same way. Yep. Nope. Getting out of order here. You can also just use a water bowl. You don't need to have the egg in it. I like adding egg to things I'm frying. Uh, it helps give it a nice golden brown covering on it. Um, so, yeah, I use that. And what we'll do here is we'll get a decent amount done, and then we'll start adding them to the frying oil and then continue. As I said, I'm not eating all these tonight. For anyone who was on Meat Gistics earlier and noticed that all of the top things uh, went away, we have fixed that. Like live, um, topics, users, all of those for some reason just disappeared. Austin was able to fix it really easily. Okay, so what the amount I put there was probably too much. Uh, I couldn't get the two initial corners to meet perfectly. So that one is probably gonna give us problems. It's probably gonna come open during uh, the deep frying. And for anyone who wasn't here initially, that's just peanut oil. Uh, we talked about it on Meatgistics earlier in the week. 
just what the best deep frying oil is. Pretty much peanut oil was the consensus. <laughs> the talking that I'm hearing from coming around is me. It's coming back through my computer speakers. Just figured that out. Mute myself. All right. That should be better. Sorry about that. Oh, we've got two wontons there. Um, some other seasonings that might go really well with this, as opposed to the sweet chipotle lime, uh, the aloha rub would be really good. Uh, the sweet taste of Havana, I love that seasoning. I've been using it a decent amount in the last couple of months. Um, the number one seasoning I've been using recently is actually a sausage seasoning. Um, I've been playing around with a way to make one of the new Excalibur sausage seasonings into a shaker. For those of you who pay a lot of attention to what we do, you probably have heard us talk about a uh, seasoning that Austin and I <clears throat> created called Zesty Garlic Moho Seasoning. So it's like a Cuban seasoning. Amazing on fish. Absolutely great on chicken and pork. Um, still haven't used it on beef just because I'm a uh, Walton's Ultimate Steak and Roast Rub fanboy and can almost never bring myself to put anything else on beef. Um but that seasoning, we have Excalibur making it now. The labels are being made. So in the next month or so, hopefully, uh, we will have a new Walton seasoning. It'll be Zesty Garlic uh, Moho seasoning. And the next one we want to use is a, a Buffalo Ranch style seasoning. So I'm, I've taken the sausage seasoning that they made I want to reduce the salt content a little bit and then add a little more uh, zip to it, a little bit more acid, like a little bit more of that acidic taste, um, and then put it in a shaker. And the long-term goal is to have numerous seasonings like the Walton's Ultimate Steak and Roast Rub that are not only Walton's branded, um, but also Walton's exclusives. So that's, uh, it's not a ton of work, but it's a decent amount of work to get those going. But like I said, we've got one on the way. It should be here shortly, and we've already got the next one in the works. You need to expand your palate. No, I don't. That's what... Uh, my parents used to tell me when I was a kid, and now that I'm adult, I can eat whatever I want. Actually, we talked about it on the podcast today. My dad used to get me to try things by telling me that they weren't for me. Like shellfish. He'd be like, uh, this is for adults. It's not really for kids, which of course meant that's all I wanted. Of course, that could just be that shellfish is delicious. All right. So we've got, I would say about half of them made. I'm going to start dipping them into the oil. I've got the chat covering that, but I think you guys can see the oil. I actually burned myself a little bit the last time I'm doing this. So I'm trying to do it smarter this time. Yeah, so those are sinking perfectly to the bottom. Exactly what we wanted. Trying to make sure that I don't boil over here. 
I'm gonna get a different cutting board to plate those on. Oh, what a surprise. This happens to say Meet Gistics and Jonathan on the top. Uh, for those of you who pay real close attention, we changed our logo on the top left of uh, Meet Gistics to the square one. We're probably gonna go with that way more often, um, at least than we have in the past. Uh, this square one is the three line one. We did away with that a long time ago. It's now just on two lines. It says meet, and then on the next line, gistics. Hmm. So with the cream cheese being in there, really don't want to let them cook too long, but we want to make sure that our pheasant is fully cooked. Yep. And the internal temperature of that's about 188. And climbing rapidly, so. We're good here. The bad thing about using any type of wood cutting board in this oil is it does have a tendency. Uh, the oil obviously leaks into the wood and stains it slightly, but I mean, that's what a cutting board is for. Now, I've got these Green onions right here that I could chop up. I hadn't realized that I already put this knife in the kit or in the sink. Um, but even though that pheasant was probably close to 165 degrees, we didn't temp it before we brought it out there. So I don't really want to introduce it to something before cleaning it. And then hit it with a little bit more of that chipotle lime sweet, love, sweet rub. Um, awesome seasoning. This is new for us. We've had it for about six, six months, something like that. But out of all of our new seasonings that we currently have, it is my favorite. Once that mojo seasoning comes in, that will be my favorite. But for right now, this feels super hot. So I think I'm about to burn my mouth. I am telling you, if anyone who you hunt with or knows you hunt and doesn't like wild game, make this for them. It will 100% change their mind. These are absolutely delicious. Mm. That's so good. I mean, we've got cream cheese, we've got chipotle, we've got sugar from the sweet. We've got lime, we've got wonton, we've got deep fried. What is not to like about this stuff? Cannot beat it. Or drain on paper towels. Yeah. I don't think we really need to do that. What are you drinking, Tex? Also, for anybody who is planning on coming uh, to our um, Bratfest in August, uh, tickets, you can buy them right now at 
go to our Facebook page for Walton's or Meet Gistics. We have a Eventbrite set up, and that has the link to it. Unfortunately, for some reason, you can't click the link. You have to copy and paste it. Don't know why. Um, but it's going to be a good time. We're going to have a ton of vendors here. Um, we'll have some of our commercial customers here. So you'll be able to buy uh, bratwurst sausages directly from them. Um, and they will have been using seasonings that we sell. So if you want to see how you stack up versus the professionals, come buy a package of their seasoning and see, or a package of their bratwursts and see if you like what you make at home better. I'm a big believer in um, the customize, customizability, customability, however you say that, uh, being one of the main reasons to process from home. Because if you want to take a fairly basic sausage like the Blue Ribbon Bratwurst and add some zip to it, you could either add the Ghost Pepper uh, high temp cheese, or you can add some red pepper flakes. I mean, you can really make anything taste like you want it to. It takes some experimentation. And yes, it's easier for me since I work here, but the number of sausages that I've made that I just think are out of this world with making just small little changes to them, like the one that always comes right to mind is Supreme Pizza Bratwurst. Just Buy some hard log pepperoni, grind it up with the meat, and put it in there. It's incredible. And then take, you know, something that's spicy but not really necessarily hot, like the hatch green chili. Add ghost pepper cheese to it, and it's like a totally different sausage. Mellow corn. I don't... Oh, we're talking about whiskey. Uh, James, yeah, I mean, that's what happens. If you go back a year and a half or so, um, two years for Austin, uh, you'll see that we were a lot thinner at one point. But it's hard to work in a place that makes so much delicious stuff and not put on weight during the podcasts. Well, for those of you who listen to the podcast, something pretty, a few funny things happened today. So I'll let that speak for itself. I won't spoil it. Um, we've got next week. We have next week. No, two weeks from now. We hopefully have uh, the main person behind that huge new processing plant up in um, Montana. So it's one of the, it's somebody who's not associated with one of the big four meat processing who's opening a billion with a B dollar meat processing plant. So really interested to get her. Um, backstory, why she thought that, or why she wanted to do this, um, and what her, her long-term plan is, because super interesting that somebody would put that amount of money into a meat processing plant right now with, I, I assume this lady's way smarter than I am, um, and not be associated with a Tyson, um, a, even like a Cisco or something like that. So hopefully that should be an interesting conversation. That's a little too much. So we are about three quarters of the way done here. That one's opening up. I'm going to put another batch of these in there.
So the first few that I put in there got stuck on the claspers. I'm sure that's the right word for that, on the tongs. Um, so I just did the rest of them by hand to prevent that because they opened up as they got stuck. Uh, Ryan, I probably won't ask her that. It seems like a really aggressive question. Um, but I do know uh, the company that she owns is a ridiculously large financial institution. So I don't think she needed any money. Mm. God, that is so good. And there really isn't much not to love about this. And, I mean, this is all inexpensive stuff, especially, well, depends on how you want to count how expensive pheasant is. If you want to put in the time, the ammo, the gun, then pheasant's pretty expensive. But if you're already hunting it anyways, it's free, basically. It's not an expensive meal to make. It's certainly not hard. Those seem to be taking longer than the first batch. So I'll just keep going as we're waiting on that. Yeah, I, I don't know what her, her thought process is. I, I assume, and this is 100% an assumption, have not talked to her at all other than, actually, I've just talked to her assistant. Um, I assume she sees people wanting to control their food from A to Z and sees an increase in custom slaughter coming on the, the horizon. Because I don't know how much you guys pay attention to things like the World Economic Forum, but one of their stated goals is to make meat a luxury. Um, so, I don't know. Looking around for my tinfoil hat. So you can also make this exact same recipe, um, just instead of this, use the cinnamon toast um, and add a little bit of vanilla, like vanilla extract instead of the habanero mango jam. And that will be uh, a sweet crab rangoon. I get it from our local Chinese place, probably like every other time I go there. Um, and it is really, really good. Now they are, you know, I, I don't think they're using cinnamon toast, but they're using some sort of sweet seasoning on the outside of it after I asked them and they said they added uh, vanilla extract to make it sweet. I need just a couple more wonton wrappers. Be right back.
Tyson isn't even close to what it was when I was a kid. What do you mean by that, James? Are you saying like size wise or quality wise? If you mean quality wise, uh, I would argue that we're seeing that in a lot of sectors. I mean, when you have these ridiculously huge companies, I, and I've seen it, you know, I worked for Kodak up in Rochester, New York. Um, sometimes companies get to a certain size and they lose the daily oversight um, and employees just don't care as much as they used to. And I definitely saw that at Kodak. There's a card game up in, more popular at least, up in New York called Euchre. Um, and there were employees who I, I, I swear played more Euchre than they did anything else. And it was, you know, it was a known joke. People would talk about it. I don't know if these are, if they're drying out slightly, but they don't seem to want to stay as, as closed as they did before. My egg might have separated from my wash, or from my water, my egg wash slightly. And it's not that the wontons have dried out, because they were in their package in the fridge. All right. Last batch to toss in there. Papa Sop, if you're still with us, did you make up your mind on uh, what you're doing with your grinder yet? I saw you were using the old Butcher series you bought from us the other day. I believe you went ahead and pulled the trigger on a 12. But maybe not. I might be wrong on that. The nice thing about having... Um, somebody to do a decent amount of the website stuff and kind of getting further away from some website issues is I have been able to spend at least a decent amount more time on Meatistics recently over the last couple of weeks. Um, that should continue to increase. I'm hoping to be back to the point where anything that posts, I at least am going to take a look at it in the first hour or so that it posts. Cause that's what it used to be. Um, either Austin or I would at bare minimum see a post come through. For a while there, we got so busy and Meatistics was so busy that it just wasn't possible. But I think we're, we're on the right track to getting back to that interaction with everybody. So, Yeah, I mean, money spent on any hunting equipment, there's no way you're ever going to convince me, at least, that a deer that I shoot, as long as it's a healthy animal, is not more healthy than anything I'm buying at the store. I mean, melted cream cheese wrapped in deep fried wonton with mango habanero jam, pheasant, and sweet chipotle lime rub. There is nothing to not love about this recipe. 
few onions on there. Huh. That onion really does change the taste of it. I don't know if it's better or worse, but it's definitely different. They got a few more minutes. All right, so what else? A few things. Um, make sure you go to Walton or to Meat Gistics uh, and enter the Meat Gistics members only giveaway. Uh, every month we've been doing a $50 gift card. It's open to anybody who registers for a Meat Gistics account. Uh, we resets on the first of every month. I think this is the first month or maybe it's next month that we're doing something different instead of a $50 gift card. We're doing a Walton's rat or Walton's quick patty maker. It's an attachment that fits any grinder. I haven't heard of it not working with any stuffers. Um, and basically, as you stuff, it's got a cavity that it'll put push all the meat into. It's perfectly round, uh, and then you just slide something back and forth. So you have perfect size patties every time. Um, so I think that's what we're giving away this month, and then. We're obviously doing our Walton's slash win giveaway right now. So go on over there and win. And then go to waltons.com at the top. We have that summer sale. And that has a, a list of all the items that we have on sale for our summer bash. I don't know. what We're sticking with summer sale for now, but I'm not in love with it. And Austin and I are talking about doing something else to incentivize people to take advantage of items on sale on that now. The thought process is a save now and later. So save now, you get the item on sale, but during busy season, maybe not even that far away, uh, we'll also send a 10% off coupon or a free shipping coupon, something like that. Cleanup's going to be a pain in the butt for this. During normal working hours, luckily I've got uh, Justin, our social media guy, who if you've been paying attention to our social media, is doing just a bang-up job. Engagement is through the roof. Somebody's actually like taking the time to put together well-thought-out and well-crafted posts. Uh, social media is just not my thing, so... Not something I'm good at. He's doing a great job. Um, but normally part of his other duties are helping break up and set or set up and break down from any video we're doing. So I'd help him, but he'd do the vast majority of the cleanup here. But with it being after hours, it's all on me. Boo-hoo, right? Poor me. Whoa. The question is, how many of these am I going to eat? It's important to remember that there was an entire block of cream cheese in there. So I can't eat it all. Cannot do that. Please tell me it's not a Totino's. That's all I want to know from you. Perfectly fine with frozen pizza, but no Totino's. Have more respect for yourself than that. Oh, uh -huh. Wow. Neil, no, I didn't see that. Did you post that on Meat Gistics? Three points and 64? That's insane. Good job, Papa Sop. Only Austin loves Totino's. 
Oh, it's real hot. Ooh. Ooh. Move this out of the way. You guys got any questions? Do you want to see anything? Is there anything on the Walton's One Shot or either one of the electric sausage stuffers that you're interested in? I mean, I've got all of that in here, as well as most other Walton's equipment. So if you've got a question on Walton's equipment, we can go over it right now. I'm going to turn the AC on. And whoops, another beer. Okay. I will take a look at that because that sounds like a absolutely crazy buck. So James, Austin and I were actually talking about that on the pod, or actually Patrick and I were talking about that on the podcast today a little bit. Um, I'm sure like the old style hot dogs were, what do they used to would say, lips, something, and ass, was the joke, at least when I was growing up. But I just read an article the other day that was basically refuting that. I mean, yeah, they absolutely use, like, cheek meat, um, other, you know, quote-unquote, less desirable cuts, but it's really nowhere near as bad as people made it sound, or people would say what was in uh, hot dogs. Are there bargain brands that are probably pretty bad? Yeah, I'm sure there are. But this meme has always made me laugh. I've talked about it a few times. I'm going to post a link to it. If I can get it to show full. That's so this was a, a meme I saw right around the time I started working here and it made me laugh so hard. I have no idea who the Teletubbies are or what they do. Um, but this is an absolutely great meme. Okay, I can explain that. Um, I only have the 22, so we're going to have to do it solely on that. Let me eat this and I'll grab it and show you. So this is our Walton's 22 grinder. This is our Walton's 22 grinder head, head assembly, whatever you want to call it. This is our Walton's one shot. The Walton's one shot works with the 12, 22, and 32. There is not a number 12 one shot, a number 22 one shot, and a number 32 one shot. There is the Walton's one shot that works across all of them. The reason that works is because on the hookup of our systems, the six spline gear and the housing are all the exact same size. Now, 
This Walton's one shot, what it does, for those of you who don't know or might be interested, um, is it grinds twice with a single pass. So when we're making snack sticks, when we're making anything really, um, I generally recommend people grind twice. I know somebody ground once, or maybe twice through a three eighths uh, the other day on meat sticks and made some beautiful looking sausage. So part of it is definitely personal preference, um, but for most of them, you're gonna wanna regrind at least one time. For snack sticks, what we would generally recommend is that you grind that you grind twice. First, through a 3 8 plate. So that's these plates with this, these big holes in it, right? So from here, we're taking like whole chunk meat and making it into something that'll push through these holes. Then we would recommend that you grind it again and put it through these tiny little holes. So these holes are quite a bit smaller, which means that it's gonna take quite a bit longer for our second grind to process. The reason for that is when it's a whole chunk like this, the auger can fairly easily grab it and push it down towards the plate and knife. Once we've broken that all up and it's all loose, it's gonna have a harder time convincing the meat to go down this way. In fact, when it starts backing up here, it's gonna wanna push back over because there's a very small amount of space uh, between the auger and the housing head. So it's gonna even wanna fight you back that way. With the Walton's One Shot, we've got a breaker plate with a larger center hole. So if you can see, I can fit my pinky through the center hole in this, not a chance on this, not even close. The reason that this is gonna have a larger central hole is so that it can sit all the way back on the auger, right? Then we've got what is called a two-sided knife. So instead of like the propeller look or the commercial look, it's got sharp edges on the front and the back of the knife. The knife, sits on the opposite, or you know, sits outside of the breaker plate. Then we can take a 1 8 we can take a 3 16 a 3 8 plate if we want, and put it on the outside of that. Now, these plates both have a single notch right down the bottom of them. Our Walton's One Shot Grinder Head has a notch right here that those line up with. So, they're gonna be held in place as the auger turns. So as the auger's turning, it's going through the kidney or breaker plate. It's really just chunker plate. It's going through that. It's getting hit by the knife. Then it's getting hit by the knife again as it goes through our 1 8 plate. For anyone who makes a bunch of snack sticks, this thing is amazing. We tried this system from another vendor. So a competitor of ours, we were talking to a vendor, they wanted us to carry it. They said they made this customer's process. They made the product for the customer or for the vendor. We bought it and hated it. Our thought process was that if this worked well, it'd be used in commercial processing and commercial customers don't use this. They use something called a Gemini system. When we made our grinders, we specifically asked them to make a change to the RPMs. We increased the RPMs on our grinders and we think that's why it's working as well with it because it really is amazing. We have pre-ordered pre-order sales and these might be in the beginning of August. I don't want to promise that, but they might be. Um, we're going to sell out of these in, in no time. Um, I did not want to carry this product. They sent us an entire another grinder with that kind of head, but it had a different rear hookup. It was just square back here. So somebody would have had to buy a whole new grinder and, you know, it would come with the head, but it's a whole different system. And I was not that happy with it. I didn't think it did a great job. They sent us this that hooks up to our current grinders as kind of a last ditch effort to get us to try to carry something. Um, and remember, I went into this not wanting to do it. 
First time I used it, I was confused as to what the results were. So I actually went and got commercial sales guy who's been here for forever, uh, Kurt, who podcast listeners will have met before. Um, and I didn't give him any context. I just said, go in the cooler, look at the grind, tell me what you think. And his response was, yeah, it looks great. Nice, clean grind, good particle definition. So that kind of started changing my mind on it there. Um, we've hooked back up the old, uh, the one we bought of a competitor's again. And while it is, theirs is a number eight instead of a number 12, it just doesn't gl grind as clean as ours. So yeah, we're super pumped about this. Um, for anyone who's bought the 20 or 30 pound electric stuffer or the Walton's one, ha one shot, I can basically... I don't want to guarantee because the whole thing under promise over deliver, which is what we're trying to do with this. But they're really good. Both of them work really, really well. We're really excited for this. We're hoping that everybody who buys them is going to be thrilled with it. So. Ooh. Find love in my city today. Amazing. It really is, it's an awesome, awesome thing. Less time spent grinding means A, you're on to the next process quicker. And also with our regular grinder head, we would recommend that you get a really good freeze on your meat, almost to the point where it's, I mean, not frozen solid, but you'd want the outside of it frozen. With this, right out of the fridge. No freezing whatsoever. Um, it works perfectly fine. And then you pass it through once I mean, we've done 25 pound batches and I think like less than seven minutes, six, seven minutes. And remember, that's not a grind. That's grinding done. No more grinding after that. You go on to the mixing phase. So that's less time. Your meat has to be out of the fridge or freezer, wherever you're keeping it. Less chance of it interacting with anything like a microbe or bacteria. So it's just all around. It's an awesome deal. So yeah, we're super pumped about that. Yeah, normally I have Patrick back there who'd catch those things and delete them, but they seem to have gone away. And I don't know how to do that, so. Any other questions? Do you have any new? Trying to think, I don't think we have any really other than these things coming to market, which is obviously huge. We are talking about a new um, a new way to clean stuffing tubes. So to give credit where credit's due, Dylan, uh, Brett's other son who runs all the commercial sales side of the business, has an idea for stuff or a stuffing tube cleaner that would f be far superior to this thing. Um, so these are the, basically a pipe brush. You have one for you know your tens, twelves, and thirteen millimeters. Another one for your sixteen to twenty-eight ish, and then another one for your big ones. Uh, he's got a better idea that would be much more hygienic. So. It would be similar, kind of, to the Walton's uh, Sausage Stuffer Flusher eggs. Oh, that's a question. Who here has uh, a Walton's Stuffer? And if you do, did you buy the suction cup feet? Oh, God, James, I don't even want to... I'm not guessing at that. Can this be pre-ordered without a current order being held up? It's a good question. I don't know. We're going to find out, pop us up, but it'll take me. I won't be able to get the answer tonight. Um,
Okay, pre-ordering. I will hopefully find that out uh, tomorrow for you, and I'll, I will let you know. I'll reach out through either Majestics or somewhere. Yep, Dave, we are still live. We are pretty much wrapping up. So, Keith, obviously the next time you use it, I would suggest you use them because the suction cup feet work absolutely great at preventing it from rocking now with the electric stuffers it is not necessary they have a wide and heavy enough base where it is, it's not going to go back and forth almost no matter what you do to it. Now, however, having said that, I just realized I've yet to do a snack stick size casing on this uh, with the hand crank. I've done it on the larger diameter as a test, but I have not done snack sticks. So it might actually possibly, I don't know. I don't think it really would. But I will test that. I'll see. Um, our 20 and 30 pound and the 10 pound. All right, I'm going to show you the 10 pound, but I have to find the meme that it makes me think of first. And I'll post it in here. There it is. All right, let me clear some space off. So to be clear, before I show you guys this meme and the 10 pound stuffer, this is not a negative about it. It's just what it made me think of immediately. No, oh, no, go back. There we go. Okay. Now, look at that, and then look at that meme. Especially if you see it next to the 20 or 30 pound model, it looks exactly like that original meme where it was short Keanu Reeves next to regular size Keanu Reeves. But this has the drawer as well. Great place to store your stuffing tubes so you don't lose them. Um, this is just a, sam not a sample, a prototype uh, they sent us. I believe we are going to, to carry it. Uh, we kept the diameter of the stuffing tube the same because we wanted to be able to reuse, as, only carry one size piston, one size piston gasket and making it wider like that was the easiest way to do it. All right. If there are no other questions, I'm gonna eat one more of these and we'll take off. And then I will see you the second Wednesday of next month. Where I think making a sausage would probably make the most sense. We made a red sauce, then we made Rangoon. But probably making a, a sausage is what we'll do next. And I'm starting to sweat.
Do I know how to end the stream? I think I can do it from up here. If not, I might be calling Patrick. YouTube makes so many changes constantly on how you have to do things that it's difficult to keep up. Mm. For anyone who has not tried this, I cannot recommend the Chipotle Lime Sweet Rub high enough, highly enough. Ticks all the boxes. Got a little bit of sweet, some lime, and believe it or not, Chipotle, just like in the name. But no, the sweetness is just the right amount. It's not overpowering, but it does balance the little bit of heat you get with the Chipotle pepper. Um, and the lime just kind of comes in at the very end. So really, really good seasoning. All right. No more questions? Nothing else you guys want to see? Can't grab the camera and walk around the building, though that would be fun. Maybe someday we'll do a late night processing stream from a cell phone so I can give everybody a tour of the building. Yeah, what I need to do is I've got vents up here that I've closed off. Um, but that was a while ago when our audio was a little bit more sensitive. Probably need to just open those back up. Would help. Losing 30 pounds would absolutely help. The fatter I get, the more I sweat. So what can you do? But would that be interesting if we did a late night live stream and then at the end of it gave everybody a mock tour of Walton's? I love showing this place off. I think the most impressive portion of this company is our shipping department. It's fascinating. Huge. How they run things is super slick. So, all right. We will talk about doing that. Maybe then the next one we do will be super simple. And then as soon as we do that cooking, we'll just walk around. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but we'll figure it out. All right, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, highly recommend you make these. It is one of the best things I've had. Most of us have that problem because of this site. Well, now I need to know what that's about, Neil. Get a tower fan, put it off camera to your right to move air. I can't leave until Neil explains what he was talking about, or I find it by scrolling back up. Stanley, I'm eyeing a 10-inch... Okay, sorry, Stanley, I missed that. It says, I'm eyeing a 10-inch slicer. Uh, is that the one you use for jerky? So technically, I use our 12-inch, but 10-inch will work perfectly fine. Another option, if you have uh, a Walton's, the 30-pound stuffer, yeah, the 30-pound stuffer is a beast. Um, if you have a Walton's grinder, we sell this meat grinding attachment. It uh, goes on in place of your grinding head. And in the next couple of weeks, we will have replacement blades. So it's not just a tenderizer. It'll be a jerky slicer. Um, so you can get perfectly like the same thickness size strips throughout your entire jerky. I personally still recommend a slicer because you can make the pieces however big you want. With this, they're going to be one specific, you know, they're going to be strips, um, which is great, works. But if you want something different, a slicer lets you do that. This doesn't. So, all right, cool. Thanks, guys.